How are you doing today? As you can see, I have a guest with me today. Uh, Bob, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. Gummies, as you call yes. it. Yes. <laughs> uh, my name is Bobby Henderson. Um, I'm a barber. Y'all see y'all in my establishment being interviewed by Mrs. Christie. So here I go. All right. So I just want to ask you a couple of questions. I know my husband and I have been coming here for quite some time, for a couple of years, for a few years, right? Yes. Yeah. So I just thought that it would be good to kind of just sit down with an entrepreneur and just, you know, ask a couple of questions. Um, so how long have you been a barber? I've uh, been a barber 30, 35 years. Um, I have my own business, mm -hmm. 20 years. So um, I just love what I do. Um, so you've been a shop owner for 20 years? 20 years, yes. So if you can think back <laughs> to when you first got your certification, how did you feel the training was? Did you feel like it was diverse? Did it really prepare you for African-American hair? Or was it... It was, uh, it was pretty much diverse. But um, where I learned how to cut hair at, I uh, was cutting... A lot of blacks, mm -hmm. a lot of Spanish, no whites at the time. Okay. You no, know, so um, as the years go, got longer and longer. Um, I picked up a lot of different clients. Mm -hmm. So uh, as as you know, as you in this business, repetition is better. Right. You know, so you learn how to you know do certain things. You know, certain type of hair, as I should say. <laughs> Did you have a mentor? Like, were you? Because I know a lot of us are just naturally. Talented, you just go to school just for the formal yes. education. So, were you already basically cutting hair before you went to school, or? Uh, yeah, I was. <laughs> I, I, I started cutting hair before school. Okay. Uh, it was. I started out as a juke, mm -hmm. you know, a print, and I just got serious with it. And um, Brian Jones was my, my mentor. Okay. They called me Sput in the Streets. Mm -hmm. um, he passed away some years ago, but I, I owe it all to him because he says if you really like this take off in this career and I stuck to that and I love what I do. So what made you decide to be a shop owner? I got tired of working for people. Mm -hmm. you know, I got tired of, of riffraff here, riffraff there. Right. Uh, some bills not being paid here. You know, Phone bill, cable. I said uh, I can't do that. I, I, I need to get my own shop. Okay, that way you can have more control more over more control. the atmosphere. But every shop I was at, uh, I learned the do's and the don'ts. Okay. You know, so I can say I learned something from each shop I was at to put it into a perspective. You know, I just, when I said I'd get my own shop, I knew how to run a business. Right. You know, so. so what were some of the struggles of becoming a shop owner for the first time? struggle is uh, trying to reach out to clients, customers that's not your clients. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to, you know, let them know, come come give me a try. Right. You know what I mean? Instead of, you know, um, y'all just coming in and not getting service. Right. You know, so, give me a try. You know, I'll show you the professionalism of the business, mm -hmm. of the barber. So, that was, that was one of the struggles. And just gaining trust from the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know, the barbershops have a bad name. You know, yeah. Most black barbershops. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, <laughs> you know, I just wanted to let them know we're not that barbershop. Right. Now, have you always been in this location, or were you somewhere first and then you moved here? Actually, I was a couple doors down okay. before we came to this building. This building uh, is a little bigger. Okay. So the building down on the end was, uh, we was there for three years. Okay. So we came down here, we've been here 17 years. So... And you're not, you don't own it by yourself, right? You have no, a partner. I have a, a partner named James Cook. I don't know. We worked together in a previous shop before we came here together. Okay. You know, so us two together, you know, like Batman and Robin. <laughs> you know. okay. I'm Batman, though. <laughs> <laughs> so now, did you know each other before starting cutting yes, hair, or you yes. learned Rob yes. being in the part of the I knew, I knew, uh, I knew Cook from growing up in the same neighborhood. He lived a couple, couple blocks away from us, and uh, we would go up to his neighborhood because they always had to clean his neighborhood. Right. <laughs> so we would play football. They had the best basketball courts. Mm -hmm. So we'd go up there, and, and that's how I met him. Okay. Oh, wow. That's good. So they got had a good 
rapport with each other, yes. y'all worked with each other, so you kind of knew. So, okay, so you went to school, got your certification to become a barber. How did you learn the business side of it, though? So you were good. You had the skill, but how did you learn the business aspect? Paying your taxes, making sure you had enough money to turn the lights, because, you know, it's a cash business. Right, right. Well, it was it was more trial than error. Mm -hmm. You know, where I come from, come on, what we say, you should have an SD. Right. You know, <laughs> save your money, save right. your money. You know, pay your bills on time. And, you know, that was it. You know, it was just um, learning the business aspect of it. You know, like I said, you know, the do's and don'ts of the business, you know, um, like the music you play in the barbershop, you know, mm -hmm. don't cuss words, that'll run your clients away, you know, just, your clients are a reflection of you, so if you if you are a knucklehead in the streets, right, that's what type of clientele you're going to have, you know, and I, I wasn't that type of, type of barber, but, you know, going back to the bill aspect, it's just, you know, if, if you, if you, in this business, if you want the lights to stay on, you gotta pay bills. If you want the cable to stay on, you gotta pay bills. Right. So you know, just that it was it was a smooth transition. Okay, um, customer service. I want to talk to you about that. Nowadays, customer service seems to be a little bit of a <laughs> lost art, and having poor customer service can also cost you customers. And how so? How do you balance that, making sure that you give good customer service to your customers, as far as not even just while they're in the chair, but when they're trying to contact you for appointments and things of that nature? So, how do you juggle that? Well, um, customer service, it all, it um, it depends on what you want out of your customers and mm -hmm. who you want to be your customers. I want, if I could get everybody in as a customer, I would. But the service part is um, just being professional, mm -hmm. you know. You know, clean cut, you know, somebody make an appointment, honor that appointment, you know, just, you know, just the professionalism of the business, just um, keeping them coming in, right. you know what I mean, is is, is, is my task, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, so, you know, greet them right. with a warm greeting, mm -hmm. hi, how you doing, how you doing, young fella, right. how you doing, sir, how you doing, miss, you know, so, that's that's just basically it. Right. You have like a set time of day where you're like, all right, I know I need to, before I close up shop, let me sit down, make sure I return phone calls or make sure I return text messages or you try to do it as they come in just to make sure you're on top of it. You have a step where it just kind of yeah. depends on the day. <laughs> it, 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 it just depends on the day. Yeah. Um, Sometimes I do it uh, in between haircuts, uh, you know, replying back. But if I don't reply back to them nine times out of my Nine times out of ten, my clients know I'm busy. Right. So eventually, I will get back to them. Right, right, know? right. So that's basically it. Okay. Um, let's see. So I know being a barber, you're on your feet all day, and you work some long hours. So you're in, I know you try to accommodate your customers who work a nine to five. So you can come into the shop, what? What's the earliest? 5.30? 5, 5, 5.30 is the earliest. I have a lot of older clients. Yeah, and they like, they like to get in. They like to get in before, you know, before the sun come up. Right. You know, so and a lot of people like to get in before they go to work also. Mm -hmm. So to avoid the crowd, you know, I, I accommodate them by coming in a little earlier. You know, so, you know, that works out for them. Right. You know. So you start your day at 5, 5.30 a.m., and they're usually here until 5 p.m., 6 p.m. Yeah, Monday, Monday, I'm sorry, Tuesday through Wednesday, I'm normally here from 7, 7 to 6.30. Mm-hmm. And Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'm normally here from five to about eight. Wow. You know, sometimes I, I cut it short on Saturdays. You know, right. I still need that, that me time. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So I look forward to Saturdays getting out early, so I can rest up. But um, back to the grind next week. You know, the following. Week. So with keeping long hours like that, that's hard on your body because you're yes. standing, yes. you're using your hand, yes. you're using your eyes. Yes. And I know you had a health scare yes. not too yeah. long ago. Yes. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Glad, glad that's over with. But <laughs> yeah, I had um, I had heart surgery um, uh, about two years ago. Um, when I went to the doctors, you know, they didn't have no records of me. Right. You know, being in the hospital because I've never been in the hospital. Right. Not even for a broken bone or a stitch. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was, it, I would do things that um, I would do in the gym, and uh, it was like I would get tired real fast for some reason, and I know something was wrong. Right. So um, I would get physicals every six months, but I never complained about it being tired, you know, yeah. chest pain or anything like mm -hmm. that. So 
they delved in deeper into my um my issues and um I had a uh, EKG and that came back wrong so they they gave me other testing right so with the other testing they found out they shot uh, a little dye through my veins and seen that I had a couple blockages in my heart wow. so I was like wow so you know that was that so um it was it was it was something that I would never want nobody to go through. Right. You know, but you know, it's it's done with. I'm I'm here. Right. You I'm survived. here. I survived it. You know what I mean? So, so So that brings me to two questions. So the first question is after you know, you recovered, you were out of work for a while. Um, the first question is while you're out, like I said, it's a cash business. So how do you prepare yourself for something like that? Because it's not like, you know, you're a shop owner. So it's not like you have, uh, <laughs> you have PTO time, right, you have right, some sick time, right, you fly right. for FMLA. So how did you still, you know, maintain while you were out? Well, um, with me being out of work for like a month, I think it was a month, month and a half, mm-hmm. um, I had, I had to use my savings mm-hmm. to, to live off. And, uh, also I, I have a wife also, mm-hmm. so you know we, you know she she helped me out a lot, and my business partner, uh, Cook, mm-hmm. he ran the business while I was going, so he was like, no worries, man, we gonna, we gonna get through this, right? You know what so I mean? it's like so, a family. Yeah, you yeah. know we gonna get through this, so don't don't worry about rushing yourself back to work. I got this, and okay. it was a, it was smooth transition. So you know, I, I got a good partner, two partners, mm-hmm. you know, so that was. Good. And then the other part of that question is, again, you stand in a lot, you know, it's, it's hard on the body. So how did, do, have you changed anything since you came back to make sure that you're, you know, taking a little bit more care, taking more time out for maybe lunches or something like that, just to make sure you're taking care of yourself? Well, um, I, I, I changed my eating habits, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know I, I work out a little more than I was working out because mm-hmm. I was working out at the time. But I work out a little more now. You know, I push myself to the limit, and also push myself to the limit to make sure I still don't have them side effects mm-hmm. of the heart issues. Pay more attention. Yeah. You know, <laughs> so, um, and I do that just to test my heart. Mm-hmm. You know, the doctor said I always had a strong heartbeat. Right. You know what I mean? So, um, um, but that's 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 basically it. I just I'm just more health conscious now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, I drink a lot of water. Don't drink sodas. Mm-hmm. I don't eat pork. I don't eat red meat. So you know stuff like that. You know, so it's more health conscious now. Awesome. Um. So you mentioned that you were married, and I know you have two active children, right? Yes. A son and a daughter. Yes. And so, how do you maintain a balance? Maintain a balance. Like I said, you're here early. You're here late. You have active children. Well, they're not. So young anymore, I know. <laughs> you know, they're basically grown folks now. But during the time when they were growing, they were active in sports, how did you make sure you were there to, to be support to them, be a support to your wife? Right, right. So, so um, having active kids as a barber, you know, being on my own boss, mm-hmm. you know, I have understanding clients that if my son or daughter have an event, mm-hmm. you know, this is my cutoff time, you need to get in before or after or schedule another day. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's 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 really smooth sailing when you like say you've been in the business for twenty some years. Your clients are understanding, and they, they basically know you. Right. You know, they know you have a family also. Mm-hmm. And family comes first. Right. You know, so that's basically it. Um, and not only that, you know, coming in early in the morning. You know, I sometimes when my kids were younger, you know, when I come into work, they sleep. Right. When I come home at night, they sleep. Mm-hmm. So you know, it was like. I watched my kids grow up while they were sleeping. Right. You know, so I really never had that, you know, I really never got to really see them grow by being in the house, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I got to see them grow, like, you know, by just taking off, you know, right. taking them to sport events and, you know, class events and stuff like that. So, that's it. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. Um, so, what for someone who would like to open up a shop, what advice would you give them? Yeah, I would I would say, if you want to be all all barbers working in barbershops, mm-hmm. you want eventually want to have their own business. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you want your own business, you know, put your mind to it. You know, just remember, professionalism will take you a long way. Mm-hmm. You know, 
don't do things that you wouldn't do around your parents. Mm-hmm. Or, That's a good point. Um, um, just, just, just be professional at all times. You know, make sure you greet them. You know, make sure you honor their appointment times. That's key. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> if you don't honor their appointment times, you know, That's your client is going to be somebody else's client eventually. Mm-hmm. You know, so just, just, just be professional. You're gonna have your trial and error periods, but you know, it's gonna be more ups and downs. Mm-hmm. You know, so just remember, this is what you need to do. It's a labor of love, right? Labor of love. <laughs> I've, as I've come here through the years, I noticed that you guys are always making sure that there's fresh paint or you're doing different, you know, adjustments to the shop to keep it fresh. I consider that like reinvesting into yes. your shop. So, do you have like a set plan as to every five years we re- we reinvest or just go by looks? Like, all right, I think it's time to do a refresh. So, how do you plan that? Well, you know, we we older barbers, so you know, um, we really. It's all about appearance mm-hmm. in here. So, you know, um, with, you know, fresh paint on the wall, you know, it's, when it's time for a change, when we get bored with it, I should say. Okay. You know what I mean? It's like, we'll, we'll sit back and we'll just take in the barbershop, you know, look at the overall. And we get magazines and see the latest trends and all that type of stuff, okay. you know, to upgrade the barbershop and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So, it's just, it's basically... Whenever we feel like doing it, we we'll do right. something. You know okay. I mean? Or a client suggests, okay. you know, y'all need a bigger TV. <laughs> yeah, your TV, too TV small. is the focal point, right? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, so that's that's um, How do you think your barbershop impacts this community? Oh, we, uh, I think we impact this community a lot. I mean, because before we came out here, um, we sat in a parking lot just to see how much business is in this area. Like a lot of a lot of cars and stuff come through this this, this uh, parking lot here, mm-hmm. so I, I said this might be a good location. So um, we, we went on and did it for the barbershop here, and still to this day, it's a lot of people in this area that still don't know here really? after yeah. twenty some years. <laughs> wow! You know what I mean, but um, um, we watch kids grow up around here. You know, mm-hmm. when we first started out here, little boys roaming. You know, we we throw our Customer Appreciation Day every year mm-hmm. around here, so they look forward to that, you know. And they know we good guys in here, right. so you know, um, they, they check on us, you know, make sure y'all are. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so. Um, with barbershops in as a whole, you know, a couple of years ago, the movie Barbershop, how they had, how they depicted the uh, the atmosphere of a barbershop where you know guys just sitting around chatting and having your uh, political conversations. Is that like the true uh, atmosphere of a bar shop? Kind of yes. like men view it as time to kind of get away? Just yes. <laughs> bar shops. Bar shops have multiple personalities. <laughs> you know, it's like the, the men's club. You know, the things we talk about in here as men, if we have a woman in here, we can't talk about. Right. You know, but it's, it's all respectful. Mm-hmm. You know, you know. And some people come here just to, you know, relax a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, talk sports, talk politics, um, you know, just stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's, it's the, the movie Barbershop portrays the barbershop. Pretty much, yeah. Know, pretty much, yes. Pretty much accurate. Okay. Yes. Awesome. So, if someone were to say, who is Bobby Henderson, who would you want them to say? I would want them to say Bobby Henderson is an all around good guy, mm-hmm. you know, respectful, you know, family man, businessman, mm-hmm. um, give you the shirt off his back. Um, just, 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 he would take care of you service wise. Mm-hmm. Anytime you need anything, you can call him. Okay. I'm that guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, even with your, like, with your kids, how do you feel your lifestyle has taught them about being a business owner? Do you think that's rubbed off on them? Are they looking to be entrepreneurs themselves? Are they like, not about that life? Uh, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't think they bought that life because they, they see the grind of it. Right. You know, they know daddy's not home, daddy at work. Right. You know, daddy's at work more than me at home. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I just don't think they more. I just don't think they want to be business in the business field. 
if if they wanted to be in the business field, you know it takes a lot of work, mm -hmm. a lot of grind. You know what I mean? So, that's good. Um, and like I say, you know, with, with my son and my daughter, you know, they 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 have a life of their own. I never push you know nothing on them for mm -hmm. them to want to have their own business. I mean, if they want it, I, I show them the rope to go get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it always takes hard work. I appreciate you so much for yeah. uh, sitting down with me yes. and pumping your gummies with me. Yes, yes. Do you yes. have any final thoughts or anything that you want to share with the gummies? Gummies. <laughs> Thanks for listening to me. You know, come see me. I'm here 24/7 on some days. <laughs> you would think, but no, nah, I'm just I'm just messing with y'all. Mm -hmm. I appreciate sitting down with Mr. and Mrs. Christie. Yeah. Mr. Christie over there. In the yeah, in the back. You know, what I mean, you know, security, you know. But I appreciate y'all, man. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Yes, no problem. All right, gummies, thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Hopefully, something that was said here today will encourage you. Have a great day on purpose, guys.